Last month, I watched 14 Netflix original shows, so we're going to rank them from worst to best. Let's get started. <music> Hey everybody, my name is Justin. I love to watch movies and clearly I love to watch Netflix too. If you guys do too, you guys are in the right spot, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell notification for more up and coming videos. 14 Netflix shows I watched last month. That's a lot. Uh, not my record though. A lot of entertaining Netflix shows and some not so entertaining Netflix shows. What did you watch for the month of April? Make sure to leave your ranking list down below. And what shows are you looking forward to watching in May? So coming in at number 14 is Love 101. This is a Turkish teen drama that I really didn't care too much about. I felt like the characters were generic and they were arrogant and they were manipulative as well. They were trying to get their teacher to not transfer to another school because she cares about them, and if she leaves, then they will be suspended by a whole group of people. So she's trying to get, so, they're, so the group of kids are trying to get their teacher to fall in love with another teacher so they can stay there. I really like the relationship between the two teachers. The students, they had some growth throughout the series. They weren't the same at the end of the series from when they started, but I still feel like these characters were very generic. Coming at number 13 is the Liza Schlesinger sketch show. I really like Eliza Schlesinger. She is really funny. I've seen her do stand-up comedy in Seattle before. I Anytime I see her stand-up, I think she's really funny. The sketch show was a huge hit and miss for me. At times, it was really funny, and at times, it was not that funny. And when it was not funny, it dragged, and I wanted it to be over. At times, when it was funny, I was laughing a lot. They really didn't have that balance, so that's why it sits towards the end. Coming in at number 12 is The Big Show Show. I really liked The Big Show Show. This is The Big Show. He has his own show. He was a former wrestler, really massive guy, and he's living in Florida with his family. Uh, this is a sitcom that uh, feels like every other sitcom that there is. Uh, at times it was funny, and at times it was heartwarming. At times it just felt like a stretch. So the, some of the things that these little kids say, I really didn't buy into it. Some of the family dynamics felt a little bit too cliche at times. But for the most part, I found enjoyment in it. The big show seemed like he was having a fun time filming the series. So for most of the time, I felt like I had a smile on my face and was enjoying the series. But I couldn't escape some of the generic and cliche moments within the series. Coming at number 11 is Brews Brothers. This is a comedy about two brothers who are running a brewery. They are completely different. They really hate each other, but they grow to understand each other's work ethics and work together. So I like the progression of their relationship. At times it's funny. At times it's not that funny. Some of the side characters are funnier than our main cast. I would have liked to see a little more about how the two brothers make beer instead of just shenanigans. I think that would have been really interesting if you had a couple more episodes around that, it would have been pretty fun. Coming in at number 10 is Last Kids on Earth, book two. This is the second season of Last Kids on Earth about the last kids on Earth. There's a bunch of monsters and zombies. It's a cartoon show and it's really entertaining. The monsters are well-designed, they're unique, and the zombies are fun as well. The kids felt like a good group of friends. They were trying to understand each other's personalities, while also trying to survive and destroy these monsters and zombies as well. There's a lot going on within the series, and I like that it was an actual series and there was episodes. The first season was just like an hour and four minutes long. The second season has episodes, and it's a little lengthier. So I really did appreciate that because you got to know the characters a little more. The first season just gave you a little tease for the characters. The second season, you get to understand them, appreciate them, and watch them battle, and it's a lot of fun. Coming in at number nine is Outer Banks. Outer Banks really started off rough for me. I could care less about the characters, the story, the scenery, whatever. I could not care about the show. But then we got to, but then we got into the mystery of this boy and his father who went missing and there's this treasure he went looking for and once other people went looking for it as well. That's when the show really started to pick up and became interesting is when the mystery really started to come into play and they knew where to go. Other people were right after them as well. So it really became a thrilling show towards the end, but started off really rough. 
Coming in at number eight is Victim's Game. Murder Mystery is really suspenseful. It's a good mystery that hooked me right away. Six episodes, hour long each, and as the show is progressing, you're more invested into this murder case and how other people are involved and we are finding more random people being murdered and you feel like you have certain connections, but we also adding more elements to the show. So it really keeps you on your toe and you're really interested in where it's going to turn out. It's a bloody interesting show about a forensic detective with Asperger's who is teaming up with a journalist to find this murderer when they originally thought it was just a suicide case and it spiraled out of control for them. Coming at number seven is Summertime. Summertime is a teen comedy romance drama from Italy and I really liked the show. It gave me a fun summer feel. The characters just felt really easy going. They, we had these two teenagers that were falling in love. They were interesting characters individually. I really liked to see a little more of them together throughout the series, but when we got them together, they worked well as a couple. I really like how they wrote the characters in the beginning, making sure that you like them individually before you like them as a couple and the other cast members as well. Got a lot of depth for them and a good story to where you care about the side characters as well. Summertime was just a really entertaining, easy going show with a lot of fun moments. Coming in at number six is High Score Girl Season 2. This is a Netflix anime series and it's very nostalgic. It's about this boy who loves classic video games like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and his interest in video game reminds me from when I was a kid. When he first started playing PlayStation 1, it reminded me when I first started playing PlayStation 1 and how I just was so enthralled by the video game console and all of the games and it really brought back memories. It's an interesting show as well. It's like a love triangle between this boy and these two girls who are trying to impress him. They like video games as well. So it's all about video games and connecting with each other through video games, but also trying to develop personal relationships as well throughout the show. And it ended up on an emotional note and I really like to see a season three. Coming in at number five is Drifting Dragons. This is the most recent Netflix anime series and also like High Score Girl, it's really good. It has a lot of big, massive dragons that look astounding. The design on them is remarkable. And the animation for Drifting Dragons is beautiful to watch. It's a quickly paced series about people in the sky hunting dragons, selling the meat, I like that the series did not feel repetitive about each episode of them just hunting a new dragon. They came down to port, they sold the meat, they explored the town, you got to see their daily lives. Overall, Drifting Dragons was a beautifully animated series with really entertaining moments. Coming in at number four is Afterlife Season 2. I really don't like Ricky Gervais as an actor, but something about Afterlife Season 1 and Season 2 I fell in love with. I fell in love with the characters and how emotional and funny it is as well. It's a dark comedy, so seriously, really dark. There's a lot of talk about suicide and how loved ones have passed away. There's a lot of conversation about that within the series, but Ricky Gervais manages to have funny moments thrown throughout and this season is way more emotional than the first season was and I just was so excited to see season two of Afterlife, and it gave me everything I loved about season one and more, more character relationships. Really short show, about six episodes, about 25 minutes long. I wish I could sit down and just watch these characters all day, but season two was a good time. Coming in at number three is Money Heist season four. It took me forever to get through the Money Heist series. I watched the first three seasons before, like a week before the fourth season. I never seen them. It's such a good show. I could really tell why this is a popular show worldwide. It is a really intense, edge of your seat kind of show. I like movies and shows like this about bank robberies and um, trying to survive inside one location. And Money Heist is just like that with a lot of things at stake compared to the first three seasons. I feel like there's a lot more because there's someone inside the bank 
who's very skillful about a lot of things and so he keeps these characters on their toes and you always you, you're wondering what's going to happen with one scene and another and is he around the corner we don't know i like that about season four it really kept you on your toes and you were really interested about what was going to happen and you still really like the characters it's a good continuation from the third part going into the fourth part Money Heist was a show I was not expecting to like as much as I did, and I'm glad I checked it out. Coming in at number two is Midnight Gospel. Midnight Gospel was one of the weirdest, unique shows I've ever seen on Netflix. It's an animated series that blends animation, really trippy animation, and a podcast. You have podcast uh, conversations about death and uh, legal marijuana, and just a bunch of different things, and it's blending it in with an animated episode. Sometimes it's a little bit scripted to set up the series, but then you just have these conversations that are matching the animation. It's a show that I had to watch twice, once to look at the animation, once to listen to the podcast, because each are so good and easily could be distracting. The animation is from Adventure Time Creator, and uh, it is beyond trippy, very bizarre. If you just watch it for the animation, you'll catch a lot of things. And the podcast from have and the podcast from Duncan Trussell has some really engaging, just really bizarre and um, captivating conversations between him and a guest. And it was a unique style for an animated series it's not for kids at all it was just so interesting to listen to these conversations and watch the animation too i highly recommend checking it out but coming at number one is never have i ever this is a show written by mindy kaling and um pretty emotional series actually um it was a show about a young girl who lost her father when she was younger she lost the ability to walk so she's excited to get the school year started She's trying to balance high school relationships with also expectations from her mother because her family is from India, so she has certain expectations about boyfriends in school. We have our young actress that was picked out of like many, many girls and she's never been in anything before and she did a remarkable job. When it called for her to be really funny, she was hilarious. When it called for her to be emotional, she was right there to do that. The writing is perfect. It is hilarious. It's emotional. It's very personal. It's very relatable as well. I highly recommend checking out Never Have I Ever. I almost did not watch it. I'm glad I did because I was not expecting how the story ended up and the story throughout. Our narration from John McEnroe, a former tennis player, was gold. And we also had Andy Samberg narrate one episode as well. It is a unique show. It is written by Mindy Kaling. I highly recommend checking it out. So there you guys have it. All 14 Netflix shows I watched in April ranked worst to best. What shows are you looking forward to watching in May? And stay tuned for more up and coming Netflix content. My name is Justin Watches Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.